Okay, yes. Okay, good. Uh, now you just have to say everything from the last, just kidding. <laughs> okay, okay, let's, I'll ask a couple of questions. Okay. Um, in your experience with this measurement, the IITTI, did I say that correct? World Civility Index, yes. Okay. IITTI, yes. Um, what have you found or what do you believe are the most effective methods of changing people's empathy and mindset and such so that it can be measured higher? In other words, what are the modalities you like to partner with to bring into companies? Mm -hmm. Wow, this is the very, um, very pressing uh, question. Uh, there are people who have done this um, experiment uh, in academia, and there's a, a specifically there is something called a nudge theory uh, by uh, by a fellow at the University of Chicago called Richard Thaler. Dr. Richard Thaler won the Nobel Prize based on this nudge theory. And the idea is that, you know, if you want to change people's behavior, you don't need very much. You don't really need to nudge them to a certain direction uh, once in a while, more frequently. Uh, so, so you just have to do it um, in a very innocuous um, way and, you know, put, put a sign up there on the wall, uh, reminding people of certain things is a reminder uh, issue rather than a three hour business ethics course that would change the whole company's culture after the three hour, which, you know, you and I know that is, is not realistic. They say, well, the three hour lecture is not, is good, but it's just not enough. You need to have this constant reminder. So what the group, the IITTI group has done is to design micro lessons. Every day you you take just a three minute lesson watching a video. Uh, we, we call them the feel good uh, videos so that they watch it, they go, ah, oh, this is good. You know, there are people around the world who are really nice to people um, thinking about, you know, changing the environment, sacrificing their own career. They could be making a lot of money, but they're doing something like this and so on, so on and so forth. So when people feel that the world is actually trying to do good, um, they they do tend to do good themselves. So that that is what the uh, what the whole premise is. So there's a there's a system built in, basically, and that sounds great. I agree. Um, have you and your team read the IDG's white paper they came out with? With the f I think they took it into the four or five corporations. Maybe you've mentioned that already. Uh, yes, I I read the uh, the IDG. They took it to I believe ikea uh and a few other ones how did you find that in cross-referencing your language your results your style versus what they do i think i think we can have a uh, strong alignment i think i think yes. sometimes the language we use they may not use micro learning uh whereas when i come from you know the the e-learning world uh they use micro learning asynchronous learning, which is a big word, and people, oh, gosh, you know, what's, what's, what's asynchronous? That means, you know, you, you learn it on your own instead of having somebody alive, uh, you know, babysitting you all the time. So with every day, 365 days a year, we say, well, in three years, your company culture will change tremendously. You won't see it every day. It's like going to the gym. Um, you know, you after two weeks, you may get just a sore muscle. You may see not a lot of results, but you mm -hmm. will see results eventually. So that's mm -hmm. the whole idea. Uh, is Simon Sinek? We were talking about. He was talking about you know how you can make changes, and so we we're following along that. So I think a lot of uh, evidence are shown that this is the way to do it instead of having gurus going into different companies, uh, IKEA and otherwise to, like I said, you know, a three hour lecture or three day retreat and so on um, in, in that regard. Sure, I see what you're saying. Um, in my own life, I've noticed much better results from small amounts of repetition uh, versus, yeah. What do they say? How do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? That kind of thing. Okay, um, cut another question or two, if I may, it'll be quick, but okay. they're, they're relevant. Yeah. Sure. Um, and, and just for a little background, just so, you know, who are we? How are we connected? Um, I came across the IDGs through James Bishop, who's pretty close to some of the 
founders, if you will, or some of the people really involved. And James Bishop is, I think he's like the most, the foremost um, practiced user in the world of the SDGs game in the English language. And I played it once in Florida at this mastermind group. And so he taught me about the SDGs and one of my clients is good friends with him. So that's how we all met. Then I woke up to the SDGs and at this party after we're all hanging out at this party doing little micro workshops. He showed us the four four minute IDGs film. And then all the light bulbs went off. I'm like, oh, thank goodness. I mean, I've had a good weekend, but nothing that incredible has happened until I watched this. These guys know what's going on in reality. Quantum physics, inside, outside, this whole thing. Someone's willing to confront the truth. And so I got excited. And so move forward a little bit. Long story short, I, I reached out. To, I had an idea about a year ago. I said, I'm going to help a billion human beings find their true nature. Right? What is that? Peace, whatever, empathy. We know what that means. And, and I thought, that's a good goal. I'm not going to do it alone. So I wrote down my 12 smartest, most influential, successful friends. All huge hearts. Usually they're about 50, 60 years old, like elders, right? Very successful. And I called them all up one at a time said, I want to enroll you into an idea where there's going to be a council of 12 leaders and the 12 council members are going to meet with me every uh, two months. So I'm asking for, and for one hour. So I'm asking for just six hours a year of your time. And, but you're going to agree to meet and, um, and you're going to be a council to help guide this mission of helping a billion people find peace. And they all jumped on board. We've met, I think, five times now. It's really developed. And one of the strategic partnerships has been with the IDGs. And I'll be meeting with Ariel and Pontus in this coming next six weeks. We've talked to them. I've talked to a few others, yada, yada. You know how these things go. Um, so that's a little background of what we're up to. And now we have a mobilization team of four. We've officially registered as like an IDG hub because why not? It's free. Um, but I came across this group, of course, through being on one of the... Um, IDG monthly collaborator calls and then yeah. and here we are. So anyhow, that's that's really just a little background so we could feel connected. And um and I did really have a question and I want to pose it. Wow. Is Pat yeah. this is this is yeah. Well, yeah, there's something here. There's something here for sure. So um sorry, Patrick. I mean Matthew, thank you. Where are you located? Um and right now I'm in Costa Rica, but I live in Victoria. My Victoria. home's in Victoria. Okay. So you're a potential BC guy, right? I'm full on BC. I'm you're a very full BC on guy. BC, except when you're in Costa Rica. <laughs> Just yes, kidding. Yes. Okay. Um, so um my way into the IDGs was similar through the SDGs. Um, and I have been developing videos for uh learners on the SDGs. And um, what, what becomes apparent is that in order to enact the SDGs, you need to actually have embody the IDGs. Because if you don't trust one another, if you can't show empathy to others, if you don't have cross-cultural awareness, then those can become blocks to action. Mm -hmm. um, and so my project for the U, U Lab and the Presencing Institute is I'm working with um, a group of um, kids from 10 to 13 years of age. And we're exploring the IDGs in terms of what would the world be like if everyone had courage, everyone had empathy, everyone had and I'm just kind of waiting to see where it goes. But Patrick, these feel good. I'm looking for material because we're meeting online. And I'm, it's like, okay, I need something. They gobble it up so much more quickly than, than I can keep up with. So if those feel good videos are accessible, and if there, uh, if you could send me a link, I'd be really grateful because then. I would show them to these kids when we meet, and that I think could launch an interesting discussion. Oh, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So feel good videos. It's it's where we can mobilize a lot of people 
to right. help source. There, there are a lot of content on on YouTube's and so on. It's just yeah. that you know, one person can can look at all those. But uh, if we have five or six people like like we have, uh, they they work wonders. And they say, oh, you know, once in a while, uh, person A would send me, hey Patrick, you know, I found three, and another person was there. And so what I have done is to in this uh, IITTI organization, we have an international vetting committee. Uh -huh. This group uh, are very diverse, you know, anywhere from Singaporean to Dutch to uh, Nigerian. They would say, well, this video is, is, is not good because of certain biases. So right. we tried to be as unbiased as we could. I'm sure we're still, still biased. We are all human, but we're trying to have the international group so that uh, but again, you know, people who are more of an expert than me and say, well, you know, these kind of setups are actually very effective because yeah. if you have one person rating this uh, video as a three out of five and the other person is rating this as a five out of five, when there's a discrepancy of two points, then you need a third person to come in to say what is what. So when, when they have this kind of things, the outcome is surprisingly good. Yeah. And 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 so this is that's why I'm running around so much is is uh, getting the vetting committee to do all that and now we have something like three hundreds of these uh, mini lessons if you may they could wow. be short articles uh, videos that uh, well, would I think Patrick from everything you've told me all you have to do is write about all of this and Matthew I think you should be writing a chapter about this this is fabulous, interesting, yeah. um, motivating, inspiring. Okay. Like, um, I, have a I have a question, if I may. Oh, no, no, I love what you're saying. And could I get your name? I, I see OSC. I don't want to oh, mix it up. Sorry. Yeah, I'll, I'll rename myself. Okay, thank you. Because I want to, I obviously love your passion and your attitude. I want to see, connect with you. Um, yeah. regarding, the, regarding the book, I'm curious to jump into that, but it's curious, Patrick, just because we were talking about the IITTI, the World Stability Index, which I'm very intrigued by because the team I'm working with, some of them are headstrong on measurement. And as you said, no measurement, no management, no management, no success. Okay, I'm in. And so, so you're a godsend in my brain because I'm, I'm not a measurement expert. So when I encounter them, I'm really grateful. What is your actual or biggest vision? Like when you wake up in the morning, you live your life, you go to bed, you do it 365 for 12 years. What do you actually, what's drawing you? What's the vision? Yeah, 12 years and I may add zero income. <laughs> uh, but uh, th this, is, this is my take. I, I got two girls, two daughters, and my life changed when I saw them coming out into this world. And, mm -hmm. and so I want them to be able to uh, inherit a, a, a world, a society where it is better off than, than what we're seeing right now. Um, there are a lot of room for growth. I think we have a lot of opportunity to, to participate in something like this. Got it. So the love of family and making sure the next generations have a good world. You know, Matthew, um, I, I'm a pretty old guy, and and uh, if you if you if you talk to me 30 years ago, you will find that is a very different guy. I was mm -hmm. I'm a techie, uh, you know, engineer, computer programmer, uh, pretty good at it, and pretty cocky. Um, I didn't care too much about people's feelings and so on. Uh, step on toes, rise up the corporate ladder, mm -hmm. all, all that. But um, now. You know, I, I find myself speaking very differently. Uh, I'll give you one example. I was I was in in China, um, seeing what their their culture is like. I was at a at a as a train station. Uh, the train station can hold maybe two thousand people, but that was the day before Chinese New Year, and I, and my and my marketing my my CFO took me there. He's Chinese. He took me there. Said, oh, sorry, Patrick, you know, this is, this is horrible. You know, there were probably 20,000 people in a, in a 2000 people train station. And you, and you know what I said? I said, wow, 20,000 love stories. All these people are going back to their hometown. Oh, yeah. 
you know, stuff on their shoulders, you know, goods and, and food and all that, just to make it just like we do, you know, during Christmas, we go home and, and, and celebrate there. They do the same thing in China for Chinese New Year. So 20,000 people trying to get to wherever they go in China. And so I wasn't, I, uh, I, you know, I would have 30 years ago, oh my gosh, this is horrible. You can't get any, you can't get anything done and so on. So, you know, when, when you change your mind, things change because people around me, all of a sudden you see them as people who want to go home and uh, you enjoy it. So, so I and think. Not, most, yeah. And not as people who are making your life difficult. They are so not. Patrick, yeah. there's the opening to your chapter, how you've changed who you were 30 years ago, 25 years ago, 20 years ago, and how you've changed and the passion that that's your opening. That's a good idea. I never thought about that. Wow, this is- you know, Like you don't, it's not quantitative. It's, not it's a qualitative anecdote, but you're going to hook the reader in. We're going to hook the readers in. And, and for those uh, hard-nosed uh, business types or economist type, Matthew, um, there, there are also economists um, who are talking about we need to have different measurement rather than GDP. So my mm -hmm. my take is GDP is good. It measures how many widgets are being produced, but it's not enough. We need to have a humanity measurement, be it the World mm -hmm. Civility Index or something, so just to complement the GDP. So it have you compared it to the Bhutan happy isn't it called the happy in index the happiness mm -hmm. index yes um we didn't want to in reinvent the wheel but it just so happened that the happiness index was rated by a selected group of people so it's a it's a small group of people and they select which country are the happiest and so on whereas what we want to do with the world of lady index is the same idea as idg and that is a collective effort a lot of people deal with it. Um, the 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 world of leading index. The way how I look at it is just a just a, a software platform, a container. Uh, mm -hmm. Is it neutral? But what you put into it, what you do with it, like what Matthew is doing with with his group of people and so on. That direction is up to Matthew and and his cohort to decide. And so so in that sense, different groups, different IDG chapters can do different things. Uh, but all with the same goal of making the world better in the in the future. So, so Patrick, what's more important to you, the outcome of the ITTI or the creation of the accuracy of the of the tool? Um, there is there is no uh, accuracy because uh, we were trying to measure soft skills, which is very different from the hard skills like calculus and math and, and so on, or thermodynamics in engineering, which is there's a certain numbers you have to achieve. Whereas in soft skills, you're not even measuring competence. We're not measuring how good a person is in empathy, which doesn't really make that much sense. But what, we, what we're measuring, this is a breakthrough, and that is we measure awareness. So, so we say, well, how do you measure awareness? Well, you measure awareness by measuring exposure. The more exposure has, so the theory goes, the more tendency a person will actually be more civil, be more aware of what is needed in them. Can I ask a question on that point? Um, and that actually added something new to me. I'm used to measuring soft skills by how's your experience been zero to 10 kind of stuff. And you're saying, well, based on the sort of dynamics of repetition in the brain and all that, if we do a hundred exposures for verse 30, at least we can estimate that this person should kind of be here. But I had a question. How far have you looked into using biometrics and other types of biological measurement for quantitative, highly quantitative measurements of empathy and peace and such? I, I would love to explore that. I, I don't think mm -hmm. our group is, is, is there yet or we have the expertise in, we don't have that expertise in, in using biometrics in something like that. I would, I would love to 
explore that in the future. Now, having said that, um, I've been around the block long enough to to take a lot of pushbacks and flack for doing when whenever people hear Matthew, whenever people hear biometrics and all that, they think of the the brave new world. Hey, you know, Big Brother is 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 watching, and I guess some people call it the wokeness or, or something like that. So oh, so. Uh, so 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 when we when we navigate through, um, we we just have to be aware that that could be issues that could uh, that could slow us down in 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 what we want to do. Just to get a couple notes on that, appreciate that. I'm going to reach out and we'll have another chat uh, in the near future. I'd like to. I'm going to offer it, and if you want to, I'd love to. Oh, and. Okay. I'm curious because I don't either have access to any of that sort of biometric stuff, but it's in our absolute agenda to acquire, to come across strategic partnerships with people who have that technology readily available. Ideally, they're already doing what we want to do and we just tap right in and take it to the next level. So I'm happy to chat about what what the strengths and weaknesses of that could be and see see what comes of it. It's a. It's not just one look at from a from a technical point of view, uh, biometrics and and other personal measurements. Um, there there are people who talk about you know the civility index should also measure about personal health, which you know is part of civilization. You know and and the, a lot of health systems are are going to go bankrupt if we don't encourage people to put an in effort into that. So that, that comes the the discipline part of 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 doing things. So, so there are so many things we need to talk about. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a fertile ground. This, this is where employment in the future, where AI is taking over many jobs, this is where the most um, employable business and- Yes, yes, I agree. How about the book? What's the book all about? What's the cost? Is there a cost up front? I'm happy to learn about it, maybe pay it, but what's the, what's the details in the book? Uh, that I don't know. I got to ask our Swiss uh, counterpart. Uh, they are they are writing this book. Um, uh, we are just contributing one one chapter, I suppose. Uh, there there are quite a few different categories in the book. Uh, some are about art and creation and creativity and so on. Mine is about the tool that we can use to scale IDG. That's 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 my understanding. So okay. If, uh, may I, uh, Patrick, can you send us the link to the contact for the book? Because Matthew, you absolutely have to submit a short chapter. I'll do it if you push me hard enough. <laughs> I'll contact you every day and ask you how many words you've written, then how many sentences, and then how many paragraphs. I love it. Because uh, I don't think these chapters have to be long, correct, Patrick? I it's think... a matter of having something that mm -hmm. is um, worth reading, let's just say. Since something Barbara. worth reading. Yeah. Yep. It's, you know, I, I really love it when you were talking about you and, uh, you know, eight, ten people who, who go out and, and do something about, you know, one billion people. You know, those are kind of things that... A lot of people say, oh, gosh, you know, how can you do that? But I, I think it's only, you know, it, it's a small group of people who can do the most usually. Uh, yeah. And to have the numbers correct. So in my business, I do consulting and I have this thing called 11X and it's a takeoff of Grant Cardone's 10X. Grant Cardone's a famous speaker on, out there in the marketplace. Anyways, so we do what we call 11X, which is where you like take your goal and make it 11 times bigger. And you put 11 times more effort in and you may not hit the actual goal, but you'll hit way more at 11 X than if you just did the normal thing you thought you were going to do anyhow. So we call it the 11 X factor, but there's a, there's an, an element to it. The 11 X factor is a philosophy where when we go forth and we do the impossible, we do radical things, we create things, whatever it is, we must remember that. The purpose of life, one could disagree, but in this sense, the purpose of life is that we're here to discover um, that which is in the way of our freedom, right? Like what is in the way of our true nature? And when we discover it, uh, we can release it. 
and be free and help others be free. And so that's the core premise of all action from the philosophy of the 11X. So I was at my desk like six months ago working on this project and my assistant, her name's Amanda, sweetest thing. She says, Amanda, or she says, uh, Matt, you know, you got to 11X the goal. And I looked at her and said, don't you dare. How could you do that to us? She says, you got to walk your talk. <laughs> okay. 1 billion became 11. So it's actually... <laughs> It's actually the 11 billion lives mission. Wow. And we have we have four reasons why it's a better title than 1 billion, but the key piece is that it it automatically instills a more uh viable perspective, which is that of multi-generational thinking as opposed to how are we going to snap our fingers and have all 8 billion of us wake up tomorrow and love each other? Probably not going to happen. Right. Instead, yeah. it's it might take two, three, five, 10, 15 generations, hopefully not 15, but it could. And therefore we have to think in terms of tens of billions because that's how many people are going to run around this planet before it might happen. Mm -hmm. So that's the full story on the title. Beautiful. I, you have to write it. You have to, I'm serious. Yeah, yeah. I'll take a link. I'll, you know, I'll play the game. we got 11 billion to go. It's not to go. There's lots already a happy and peaceful, but yeah, I'll take a link. Let's, we'll play. All right. So on that note, um, I hope, well, this is way past uh, 30 minutes, but uh, it's well worth it. So uh, Patrick, what can we do to support you so mm -hmm. that you can make your submission? Uh, well, you already did quite a bit. And just uh, suggesting that, you know, I write about what I was like 30 years ago compared to now. That mm -hmm. that's a, a transformation that uh, that I'm I'm aware of myself. Is there any way to uh, connect with you, Matthew? Of course, of course. Let's become friends forever. Okay. I'll, uh, I did add you on LinkedIn, but oh. in the chat, I'll put I'll put my email for what it's worth and yeah. phone number. I'm gonna... Okay, yeah. Matthew, you might want to join our Western Canadian IDG hub. You're right. I might. Um, okay, so I see the steeping tea. Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and, and your name is, do I pronounce it correct with Olenka? Olenka. Yeah, perfect. And so what do our, what are my next steps to take part in the Western Canada? Um, I'm going to put your name in, or Patrick, why don't you make the uh, recommendation as well? Sure. Yeah. To Carol and, and if Matthew lives on the island, um, I know you also have a, is it, is it a Vancouver Island hub? Is I think that's what you're called, right? Yeah, that's where I met Patrick. I met yeah. that group. I met Patrick there. Okay. Yeah. Oh, which, so which I'm so I'm so grateful for because then I got these emails. I saw your emails coming in, like Patrick's doing this thing. I said, I like I like measurement of of inner development, and I need to learn about this stuff. So I'm happy to be here. Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, I'll I'll send an email to Matthew after my my dinner tonight um mm. and uh i'll introduce you to our vancouver well you uh to the western canada community mm. uh which is uh quite a few different hubs i think one in alberta and one in mm. manitoba i think um, yes we have a few people in manitoba yeah 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 oh so what an exciting evening patrick thank you for bringing us together yeah well thank you so much and uh, we'll uh, stay in touch then. Yeah, indeed. Nice to meet you, Olenka. I love your personality. Nice Thank you. And yeah. Pat Patrick, I'm so glad you had your transformation. It's great to have you on the team here. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much for, for showing up. And enjoy the warm weather. It's minus, minus 10 in Vancouver. It's That's minus cold. 38 here in Edmonton. Oh. oh, my gosh. And what are you at in Costa Rica? Four cold showers a day. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. On that note, go take your shower and we'll catch you again. Okay. All right. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye.